So we've got Adam Johnson bringing you tomorrow's medical breakthroughs today. He's at the Jeffries Global Life Sciences Conference. It's taking place in New York City, and he's been talking with chief executives throughout the day, and he's standing by with the Dynavox chief executive, Edward Donnelly. Dynavox develops computer software and speech devices that help users overcome speaking and learning challenges. The medical device manufacturer just completed a $141 million IPO that's taking place on the NASDAQ. That was in April. Adam, tell us more. Okay, thanks, Pim. That's right, the IPO is at 15 bucks today. The stock closed just under 16, so uh, so far, so good. Ed Donnelly, uh, how does it feel to be uh, uh, running a public company now as opposed to a private company? Well, Adam, it's, it's exciting, and I want to thank you for allowing me to be here today. We're having a lot of fun. We, we intend to be public for a long time, and we've got a long time horizon. Let's talk about the two businesses. Uh, start us first with uh, the core of the business, the biggest part of the business, and that is the, the speech recognition. People who have severely handicapped ability to speech, uh, to speak. Yep. Adam, we have, we're the market leader in two niche businesses, speech generating devices and special education software. The speech generating devices, as you said, provide a voice to people who cannot speak for themselves. Professor Stephen Hawkins, as an example, he's in his wheelchair, he can't use his mouth the way the rest of us do. That's a an computer example. helps him. The computer helps him. Returning Iraqi war veterans who suffered traumatic brain injuries. These heroes get Dynavox devices that can allow them to speak. We repurpose that same software into a special education software platform that allows teachers to convert text curriculum into symbol-based curriculum. So, and that's the second part of the business. Correct. So the first part of the business, 80% of your revenues, the, the core of what you've been doing before, it's helping people speak who can't speak. 20%, the other part now, is taking that software and using it in an educational environment? Correct, symbol-based so that teachers prepare symbol-based curriculum for kids who can't read, kids with learning disabilities like autism, Down syndrome, cerebral palsy. Uh, we're getting outstanding results. Now, it's a great story, and it's, it's making the world maybe just a little bit better, but I have to ask you, there's some challenges here. You get some of the funding, or I should say people who are buying the products get some of the funding from state and local governments, and of course, we all know what a pinch they're in, California being an obvious example. So how does that affect people's ability to buy your products and therefore you to grow the business? Well, it, it's a great question, Adam, and we don't live with our head in the sand. Uh, we know that there are budgetary challenges at the state level, but the, the sweet spot for us is that our products provide such a benefit to those people who, whose need is so great. And the bottom line is the spend in both businesses as a percent of total education or total health care spend is de minimis. So it doesn't even hit the radar screen. And then the teachers are challenged by No Child Left Behind, Americans with Disabilities Act. They have to provide these accommodations. Now, is there every, to play devil's advocate, is there any evidence that, in fact, you still get or that these customers of yours will still get money from the governments? Intuitively, it makes sense, but is there evidence of that? There is evidence. We're seeing where the schools may reduce uh, athletic programs and other general education spend. Actually, the special education budgets are increasing because the principals and the administrators are forced to comply with No Child Left Behind and Americans with Disabilities Act. And especially on the speech generating device side, the needs of these children are so profound. Their so needs profound. are great. Now, uh, the, the cost side of the business, uh, let's talk about, or I should say, the cost side from the point of view of healthcare reform. Obviously, you gotta keep the cost of the products low. How are you doing that? How do you keep it competitive? You know, we, we are uh, embracing emerging technologies where we're using uh, touch screens and things that are readily available out in the marketplace. We do our labor uh, in Pittsburgh. The, the workforce is scalable. We've been able to increase productivity, and those have been the drivers of the cost. We haven't added people in our organization with the exception of field sales and R&D in the last two and a half years. Has healthcare reform changed your strategy in any way? We've only got about 20 seconds yeah. here, Ed. It's exciting for us because, thank God, the, the legislators embrace the needs of the disabled. 
and we expect speech generating devices to be available to everyone who might need one. Okay, Ed Donnelly, Chairman of Dynavox. Uh, Pim, uh, thanks for letting us join you. That wraps it up for us here at the Jeffries Healthcare Conference.